presence of God is going to begin to break people.
Let a fire for souls. Let a fire for your presence.
this man standing right in front of me with a white and blue striped shirt. Don't pull him, don't pull him, just, 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 just. With a white shirt with the blue stripes. Raise your hands, raise your hands, sir. raise your hands, raise your hands. The power of God said to me, in praise and worship that is here, to change everything about your life. For even now, a change is coming in your financial situation and in the sickness. Touch him. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him, touch him. I command everything in your body out of the family to be healed. In Jesus' name. The Lord is busy breaking many hearts. I want you to be open in this atmosphere. Raise your hands, raise your hands. leave it alone just just focus on him Ghost work, let the Holy Ghost work. That is how He works in your hearts. This is the refreshing that the Bible speaks about. Bring 
otra y otra otra y otra y otra to just break through that. Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. Sing a breath of God. Thank you. 
Take me deeper. Fill me more. Less of the flesh. More of your spirit. Forgive me. Where I have entertained the flesh. Resistance to you. Forgive me. Break my heart for what break yours. I receive this night the anointing of brokenness. I want to see your face in Jesus' name. There's one more opportunity for this nation. And I'm going to say it in this tone and in this atmosphere. I prophesied a little bit last two days, but I'm saying this again. There's one more 
opportunity for this nation. For where the Lord is saying, the old is passing and the new is coming. And where there was division, where there was strife, for I give one more breath that will come and breathe. For where the nation has been in obscurity and the body of Christ in this nation has been in obscurity, I shall bring it out of obscurity. For the Lord is saying, I shall touch once again my bride. I shall touch this nation one more time. For do not fear when you see, as I said two days ago, when you see emergency on the newspapers. Do not fear when you see disaster on the newspapers. Do not fear when you see chaos. And do not fear when you see that this is the end of South Africa in the news. For fear will strike the hearts of many. But the Lord is saying, I shall use the darkness as I hide myself in darkness. I clothe myself in darkness. For what they think is darkness is me. And there has to be death for resurrection to come. There has to be death for resurrection to come. And I'm taking this nation through a season of death and a season of darkness. That resurrection can come and I will cause new seeds to be birthed. New seeds to rise up. New seeds to begin to form. For it will look like a felt fire. It will look like a burn, like, a, like everything is black and burnt. But the Lord is saying, it is for new life to begin to spring forth. For stop despairing and stop looking down. For lift up your eyes and see that the harvest is great. Lift up your eyes and see that the harvest is ripe. Lift up your eyes and see the money that I've hidden in the mouth of the fish. For your prosperity lies in the mouth of the fish. And the Lord is saying, I shall cause you like a hook to pull it out from one dimension into another. But my people that are hidden in the Goshen shall not be touched by the hail, shall not be touched by the darkness, shall not be touched by famine. And I shall cause them to rise up and I'll bless them and promote them abundantly. For the Lord is saying, lift up your eyes and open the eyes of your spirits and see that I am for you. For the next two years will be hard, but the next three years will be a birthing of something new. For look ahead like my son, look at the cross and the joy that was set before him. Look at the joy that is set before this. For where you see them drop dead, one after the other, because of hearts and men's hearts failing them, know that my protection and my angel of the pillar of fire is round about you. That the angel of the Lord will be encamped around you. That no pestilence shall come at your house, even though it will come one more time. And the fear of pestilence will come. It shall not touch you, says the Lord. The famine shall not touch you, for my angel will encamp himself around about you. And my cloud by day and my pillar by fire by night. For the Lord is saying what the enemy think is bad is good for you. What the enemy think is good for him is bad for him. For the Lord is saying, my fire shall be around you. My fire shall go before you. My fire shall burn behind you. For those who fix their hearts with me and who align their hearts right for the Lord is saying see that I will not remove many who has lost focus of the Great Commission see that I'll not remove many that have lost focus of the Great Commission see that I'm not taking many generals and will stake more take more in this nation for the new to be birthed for the time of mourning is near to an end and the time of rejoicing is soon at hand says the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus name come on let's give a praise off in church
have your seats, have your seats, have your seats. How many of you experienced the moving of his breath? Five of you, the others you can get saved. How many have experienced the breath of the Lord? Amen. It's just the first wave. And I believe God is going to do a lot of things tonight. Um, thank you for coming back after the hot messages of yesterday and the day before. And uh, I want to welcome Prophet Andre and his, uh, his, his, his new and his lost and his only bright prophetess, Faye. Welcome, welcome. We love you. We really love you and we honor you. We really do. And uh, there are people watching. We have over 1,500 people online right now from all over the nations. I saw just comments, people saying they fall fell under the power in their house, houses and so on. And, uh, um, and this is still okay, you know. We've seen much more intense. But for you, it, it, is, it, is, it is okay. Um, uh, it means that Ichabod is far away from us. Meaning that uh, judgment, you see, when this atmosphere is lacking, it means judgment is there. I'm going to say it again. When glory is lacking in a church, and there are pastors that are watching us that many times mock and laugh at this, Ichabod is a sign of the judgment of God. I was weeping here. Because I don't want Ichabod to happen on my life. Do you know how many times I have seen ministers that lost it. He has, been, he has been so gracious to us. Prophet Andre, I mean, God has been so gracious to you. How we have seen when Ichabod comes on people. They go mad. You know, while I'm ministering, I'm getting messages of people attacking me while, while this is happening tonight. They don't understand the price that we have paid to, to be here. And I'm, I'm not weeping here for my sins. My sins are forgiven. I'm weeping here because I said, God, do not remove your glory from me. Do not remove your glory from me this church <laughs> do you know what it is like to stand on a stage and all you see as angels And you know that there's nothing in you that God, what is in me that God needs to use? There's nothing. What is it in me that God has to bless me? There's nothing. But he chose to, to do that. And I'm weeping on the stage because I said, all I want is to look more like Jesus. And the Lord said to me, if you want to look more like my son, you will suffer more like him. And what an honor and a privilege it is to suffer more like him. To suffer. While well, right now people are writing about us, right now trying to take us to the newspapers, I 
find it an honor that I can suffer for his name. But Ichabod, I have seen ministers gone mad, mad. That's why I was preaching like I was last night or the night before. Because we need His mercy and His grace. What will break your heart to know that the glory can be taken away in one second? And if you are unable to be broken, you are unable to be close to God. Just let Jesus do his work. Some of you look at me like Adam on Mother's Day. Just let the Holy Ghost do his work. Let the fear of God 
rest in this place. Let you leave this place. Let this encounter be worth a thousand sermons. Let the fear of God This is the refreshing that the Bible speaks about. You see many battle to receive because of a lack of repentance and a lack of a repentant heart. <laughs> My prayer is this, that he will reveal himself to you now. Jesus, reveal yourself to them. I want to preach on the pillar of fire, but I'm not going to go that way. I want to, I want to stay on, on uh, just whatever God is saying. Say to me how to be used by God. I don't have notes or anything for that, but... Uh, we have much to do still tonight, but I want you to just listen to this. The power of God is scary because when Uzzah touched the ark, it wasn't God who killed Uzzah. God had nothing to do with it. It was Uzzah's flesh that was too much. That when he touched the ark, there is the ark is a conductor of the called the electricity of God. The ark has wood and it has gold. Gold is one of the best conductors of power and electricity. It had wood 
and you see the positive and the negative in the ark, which had the ability to contain power like a battery cell. I want you guys to listen to this. Are you guys with me? Because this is how the glory operates. God would require in your life a positive and a negative where everybody is looking for only a positive. So for example, people are trying to be sinless. The glory doesn't come because you are sinless, because you cannot be sinless. People are trying to be perfect for the glory to rest on their lives. And it cannot rest on their lives because they are perfect. Because the glory requires to be housed in you. It requires a positive and a negative. It is, I'm touching now on a prophetic thing. It is when Uzzah touched the ark and he died. It was because the ark was like a battery cell that contained electricity and power. And the moment Uzzah touched it, he was earth to the ground. The ark was instructed to be carried on the shoulders of holy priests. But at this moment, it was not on the shoulders of holy priests. Just, just stay with me. Are you guys with me? It was on a cart that David put it on, which is speaking of a church that wants to usher the power and the glory in on their own methods. But what the cart did is it caused the Ark of the Covenant not to be earthed properly. Because God designed the Ark to be carried on the shoulders of holy priests who's gone through training, set apart, consecrated, that they could be a, 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 a earth that if they carry the ark, that the ark can be moved from one place to the other without killing people so that it can stay earthed. But when David put it on a new court, he didn't understand. He took the power of God for granted. So Uzzah comes to touch the ark. And the moment he touches it, the electricity goes through him into the earth. But he was not a holy priest. He was not the system that God has created, the protocol. So the power that was on the ark killed him. And God had nothing to do with it. That is why God says, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Nothing personal. It's just you're touching a power where your flesh or the carnality or the grace or the election is not in the same level of energy. And the moment you touch it, death is there, but it's got nothing to do with me. Does it, does it make sense? And like that, the glory can enter into a place. Like when I was standing here, I was in a fearful place. That if I step out of line, it would feel like something takes my heart like this and squashes it like this. This is the glory. When this is missing in a church, it's called ikavot. It's the judgment of God. Are you guys with me? So there are things, there are prophetic secrets, there are things that we can, that I can get so deep into that I'm not allowed to do it publicly. And we have created certain private platforms for such. There are things that we can teach on when it comes to the prophetic on how to hear the voice of God. A lot of people say, pray fast and read the word. That is for grade zero. Okay.
if we get into the subject of training the prophetic or getting into hear the voice of God, you'll think I'm a witch. So I'd rather just stick to pray fast and read the word. And you do that and uh, you will, my sheep will hear my voice and it's beautiful. But we, we have created, obviously we got prophetic partners that has a total different um, where we can share these things because you don't have people on there that doesn't have the conducting ability to be able to carry what God is saying or how God operates or how God works. Because no spy is going to pay to hear, to hear from you. And if they do, at least you get their money. So, you know, there are dimensions. I was teaching on something on the different kingdoms where you have the mineral kingdom, you have the plant kingdom, you have the animal kingdom, you have the human kingdom, you have the planetary kingdom. People don't understand that those kingdoms are also consciousness. So for example, let me give you an example. The reason, hmm, I say consciousness, I'm not speaking to the degree of consciousness that a human has. I'm speaking that when you look at minerals, it's alive. Just, just bear with me. That is why the wealth of the Gentiles can follow light and come to your light in Isaiah 61. And it says the wealth of the Gentiles, how can the wealth of the Gentiles follow light? It has to have a certain consciousness. Now, when we get into minerals, why I, I'm not gonna get into the whole stones of the Levitical priesthood and etc. and why God used certain stones and, and blah, 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 and how it activates the voice of God and how David would take the effort to go and speak and hear from God and how the, the Urim, the Thummim was used to hear and carry the voice of God. So you have minerals, so gold can speak. And if it can speak, you can speak to it. But where is this in the Bible, Leon? I will show you now. So you have the mineral kingdom. You have the plant kingdom. And this is a prophetic church. This is not a pastoral teaching church. So don't judge me on, 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 on those things. Uh, you have a human kingdom. So plant kingdom. Jesus, the Bible says Jesus got to the fig tree. And it says these words, He answered the tree. It doesn't say He spoke to the tree. Quotes, unquote, it says He answered the tree. Which means that you answer something that speaks to you first. The moment it raises its voice and it speaks to you, you answer it back. Joshua, when he looked at the sun and he said, be still. He didn't mean don't move. In the Hebrew, it means be silent and shut up. Meaning that a voice came from the sun that Joshua had to respond to. And we call that the planetary kingdom. I don't know if you guys are with me. So God creates man who has a consciousness level above every other creature or every other creation that has the ability to imagine. We preached on imagination. We preached on meditation. We preached on the art of contemplation, the art of confessing, which is meditation. And the church only knows the art of confessing and they've lost the art of contemplation. And they think the art of contemplation is for Eastern meditation only. But the Bible says that Isaac went out into the fields to meditate in the evening. It doesn't say to meditate in His law. Because the only scripture we quote on meditation is Joshua 1 verse 8. Meditate in this book of the law day and night and you shall be prosperous and have good success. But Isaac went out into the field to meditate in the evening and then something happened. So what meditation did he do? The 
home meditation. <laughs> Close, because the devil doesn't create anything. He copies. So I'm not saying go do an ohm, go do ohm. All I'm saying is, there is an art of contemplation, the prayer of contemplation, where there's a place where you get so still and silent, but there's a place where prophets can live where it speaks of the cool of the day. Where, where, where before I even get into a service, I can see what's going to happen in that service. Because in the realm of the Spirit, there is no space, there's no distance, there's no time. And, uh, 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 uh. So you have the art of contemplation where you can be so still for eight hours in a dark room. Nothing about, nothing around you. And then some things will happen that I can only get into our partners. But then you begin to, the Bible says that Isaac went out into the field to meditate in the evening at night. And then it says this, and he lifted up his eyes. Whenever the scripture says, lift up your eyes, it's speaking of open up your spiritual eyes, every place. When Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a ram caught in the thicket, he opened his spiritual eyes. When Abraham was sitting and he saw God and the two angels walking towards him, whether it's a trinity or not, or two angels, doesn't matter. God and two angels walking towards him. The Bible says that he lifted his eyes. And he saw God. He opened his spiritual eyes. When the Lord said to Abraham, lift up your eyes, Abraham. And as far as you can see, I will give it to you. Meaning, open the eyes of your spirit. And as far as you can see, it is yours. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. Are you guys with me? As far as the land that you can see, meaning what you see is what you have. What you see is yours. The realm of imagination is greater than this realm. That's why Jesus said, even if you have to lust in your heart of a woman, it is as if you are committing adultery. Are you guys with me? It is like Abraham being on Mount Moriah. Have your seats. And he's about to he'll offer up his son and the Bible says he takes a knife and as he's about to plunge it into his heart an angel stops him so he did not say with me he did not he did not offer his son yet in Hebrews Where are we now? Hebrews. Zedan. 11 verse 17. Eleven verse 17. Put it on. So say with me, he did not offer up. The angel stopped him. I'm gonna, before I get that, I'm also just looking for something. Now. Let me just see. Yes. By faith. Sympathy by faith. When he was tried, he offered up Isaac. Hold on. We just read, or we just know that he's, the angel stopped him from offering his son. Yet in the book of Hebrews it says, he offered up Isaac. Why? Listen to this. And that he had received the promises offered up to his own. So he received the promises. Hold on, you received something now for something that you haven't done. Next verse. Of whom it was says that an Isaac shall be thy seed be called. Next verse. Now listen to this. I, Abraham did this. Accounting that while he was busy plunging, about to plunge the knife in his son. He was reasoning in his head, accounting. We call it the reason of faith. Faith that works in a way of reason. He was working, accounting out in his head that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. 
from whence also he received him in a figurative. Listen, Abraham was sitting and the moment he was about to plunge the knife in his heart, he sat and he realized, but wait, even if I do this, God is going to raise him up from the dead because God said my promises in Isaac. So I'm going to plunge this knife in his heart. And God saw that he worked it out in his head by faith. And he stopped him. And he said, because you were even just working it out by faith, because you saw by your eyes that I was going to raise up your son, I am taking it as an offering. And I'm taking it as if you offered up your son. Meaning, imagination and the ability to see with the eyes of your spirit is greater than that what is in this reality. So what do you see about yourself? Are you guys with me? They worked out, they found out in the study in 2018 that the heart has neurons. That the heart, that they call it micro neurons. That they found out the heart has the ability to think. Are are you with me or are you lost somewhere? Okay. That the heart has the ability to think, not only the mind. So you think with your mind and you imagine with your heart. So it has micro neurons. But the Bible could have told them this long ago already. Because Jesus answered them on the imaginations or the thoughts of their hearts. So if you have the ability to see by the eyes of your spirit, it is the eyes of your heart. So that is why we get now when Abram was about to offer up his son. He could see by the Spirit. Let's go a little bit to a different angle. When the 12 spies were sent out to the promised land, 10 of them believed and saw themselves as grasshoppers in the sight of giants. They believed they could not have it. They saw themselves as weak. And God was unable to give them a promise. Yet, if they would have been able to see it, they would have had it. Because it was already theirs. But God is waiting for the ability to see. That is why the Bible says, As a man thinketh in his heart, As a man imagines and sees himself in his heart, so is he. Are you seeing yourself as a millionaire? Because that means that you are one. It is just about to be made manifest. And the greater you can see it, the quicker it will come. Are are you guys with me? Say with me, as far as I can see, I will be... These are what we call prophetic secrets. So now you understand why Jesus speaks to the tree, answers the tree. Joshua speaking to the planetary kingdom, the sun. Because the sun didn't want to keep silent. And he told the sun to be silent, to be still. If people's eyes in the spirit can be opened to see what uh, to see the uh, 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 the reality of the spiritual realm that the moment you see yourself as something it is who you are Jacob putting the oxen or the cattle or and Laban telling him they need to be you have spotted and you have this and they need to be striped and you know if they have in the tool and if, you, if they mate and they get this and they become this type then you will get paid Laban cheating him but Jacob is saying I understand a spiritual law that the animal kingdom has a level of consciousness that I'm going to put a stick in the water make it striped a rod And every time they come to mate in the place of intimacy, in the place of prayer, and their eyes have the ability to look just upon the rod. If an animal 
can look and give birth after what they see. How much more a human kingdom where God has given you a full-blown imagination. And the imagination is how God speaks. Listen, imagination is a realm of visions. It's what we call thought vision. Are, are you guys with me? So animals looking and see and they're giving birth after it. It is a principle to say, hey, what are you seeing in the place of intimacy when you're praying? What are you seeing in the place where you're spending time with the Lord? Are you, what are you seeing? Because God is limited. Listen. God is limited by the level of your sight. For prophets to prophesy. Why do we get into, if we call somebody out, and I, I, I have a lot of people I can, I, I have a lot of people that I can do and we're going to do it right, we're going to do it now. I'm just going as the Holy Spirit is going. The first thing that a prophet does is he shifts a brainwave. And these things I'm not allowed to teach publicly. But he moves into what we call a theta brainwave. Because it's the place where God speaks. So when a prophet is trained, he stands in front of somebody and he sh Why do you think prophets will just walk past you and not even greet you? They just... Because they are not in gamma. Gamma means alert. You're greeting, you're alert of everything. God's voice is located in Theta. The place of daydreaming, the place of slumber, the place of meditation. So people will always mock prophets and uh, say they are rude. No, 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 no. They dwell there to hear the voice of God. They are trained to change their brainwave from Alpha, from Bama, from Beta, from Beta to Alpha, from Alpha to Theta, just before they get to Delta. You see, you, you experience Theta the moment you fall asleep. That place, that few seconds before you fall asleep, that's where the voice of God is. That's where you get visions. Prophets are trained to stay in that place. So these are prophetic secrets. And uh, you can receive it because you're in this church and you have a grace to receive it. I preached this in another church. They would have chased me out long ago already. But if people's eyes can be open to the realm of the Spirit. And you see, knowledge. Why am I? No, no, no. Let me not get there. Or... Why is associations important? I do I love spending time with Prophet Andre because there's a knowledge he can give that 20 years of prayer can't give. That God will never give through prayer. It's called the key of knowledge. That's why Adam and Eve knew, let's eat from this tree. They didn't pray. They didn't fast. They just knew they just have to eat. And God said, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's another tree. There's a tree of life. If they touch that one, they will be like us. Exactly. And live forever. And He stopped them from it. And there was a third tree, which they also ate from. It's the fig tree which they partook from, and the law came in. Huh? And the tree speaks, and the fig tree speaks, and the fig tree spoke to them in, 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 in the Garden of Eden. The law speaks, and the law continually tells you, you need to do this to be righteous. You need, why does God use me? Why does God use, Prophet Andre, why does God use other people? Because we're more of a mess than you are. I'm, I'm serious. If you ever think there's ever a time when we would sit and think that, oh, we can, we can do this. 
You know, when I drive here, there's not one time when I'm here and I know this place will be packed out. Every time I come here, I think, God, is there even going to be people there? And if they are there, why are they there? What have I to do? What have I give to give them? What have made us to be such a fast growing church? I'm not even allowed to tell you how God blesses us financially. But if we have to build or buy for 100 million, he has to do it. And we are well on our way. But why does he, why does he, why does he use me? That's why I was crying. And I don't want to talk about it because then I'll cry again. And people don't understand. People see the strong side. But they don't understand who we are in the secret place. Where we're begging and we're trying to figure out why is God using us? Why has he chosen us? Because others have fasted more than me. Others have prayed more than me. I know pastors, dear Lord Jesus, they, they, they counsel from morning to night. I mean, the guys are working 100 times harder than me. If I phone them, they're in a counseling session with somebody. Yet, God blesses us with hundred times more. And I don't know why. Thousand times more. I don't know. You, you know the amounts. I don't want to mention the amounts. But I've shared with you. It's election by grace. It's election by grace. They put us on national TV and this church keeps growing. Going to be in the newspaper and the church will keep growing. They're going to say that I kidnap your kids and I brainwash you. We brainwash you clean. We clean your brain. <laughs> So, knowledge, why do, I, why do I find God has made it so that the Bible says that the experts of the law, Jesus says you're experts of the law, you've kept the key of knowledge for yourself and you have not given it to others nor have you entered into it. So it tells you God gives a man an ability to lock spiritual things for others. Or to open spiritual things for others. And then you have the, the um, type of Christians that says, oh, I, don't need, I don't need Leon to lay hands. So I, 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 you know, Jesus will give me, I'm just going to go in my room and pray. Jesus will give you squats. I'm getting to a scripture, don't worry. So that there's authority with what I'm saying. God works through his body he requires a Paul to go to Ananias and to get hands laid upon oh and I can get into so many but now listen to this G John's disciples they came and they said but why listen why is John's disciples fasting but your disciples are not fasting Jesus said John's disciples are fasting what my disciples have right next to them. So there is something that association can give you that others are fasting for, others are praying for, and they are not, they, they can't get even, and you're just standing next to somebody and you're getting it by virtue of the key of knowledge that is given to them, that is given. Why is Pastor Stephen planning a church? Because he prayed, you're gonna be kidding me. It's because he spent time with knowledge where I can give him and tell him one, two, three. 
and he does it. He's successful and not others. Because others think, let me go to Jesus and pray. God does not work like that. God respects order. He respects protocol. He respects it so much that when, then when Aaron and Miriam broke protocol, God killed 180,000 people. Which means that his priority is not souls. His priority is authority first and protocol first, then souls. But we cannot say soul, souls and remove the authority and the order and the protocol because there will be no fruits. I can see many of you are battling with this. It is okay. Have your seats. It is, re it is really okay. So I will rather, so there are prophets, the order of prophets, or as we call it, the prophethood. There are apostles. There, now, prophets have to spend time with prophets. Prophets can, cannot spend time with pastors. Pastors will call me astral traveling, will call me this, call me that. Do you know I have never been with a, ever with a true prophet that has called me a false prophet? Never. Because there's a misunderstanding of gifts. And the prophetic is so rare that the voice of prophets has to be preserved in this nation. Trust me. It's been chased out. Killed. Slaughtered. Slain. Their blood has been shed. Yet the prosperity and the preservation of a nation is in the voice of a prophet. Are you guys with me? So knowledge is found in association. Epignosis, which is an esoterical knowledge. Let me leave that one alone for now. If people understand the realm of the Spirit and understand how things are transferred from one to the other, meaning that when we lay hands and minister for the fire tonight, I want you to have this in your mind as well, that there can be a transference of mysteries and secrets and access. Because God gives knowledge to some. The Lord said to me, a few weeks ago, he said, I want you to go and honor any, every father that is in the city and the surrounding cities. And I've begun to do it secretly. Why? Because I cannot get anywhere in ministry without that. If Jesus says you experts of the law, you have hidden, you have, you have not allowed others to enter in. It means it tells you that there are people that are given knowledge and if they are harmed or they are hurt or they are not honored, they are mistreated, they can withhold knowledge from people. I'm not speaking of salvation. Are you guys with me? I'm speaking of a knowledge that Adam and Eve was looking for. Oh, no, 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 let me, now they're going to call me a witch. The only problem with Adam and Eve was they went in in another way. That's the only problem. So there are some who creeps into the sheep fault by another way, not through the door. That's all. If people's eyes of the Spirit can be opened, these are things that we teach our partners. You have different demons fighting different levels of ministers. The, the, where we are getting, the Lord told me we are breaking through to a next level and what is required of me and how I must die to myself. For us to break through to a next level, otherwise we are not going to. And I'm not speaking about building a church on business principles that has no glory. I'm speaking of going from one state of glory to another state of glory. Amen. But you have demons in what we call the lalarium realm that can come at people. We have demons that can come in the aerial, aerial, aerial realm. We have demons that can come from the terrestrial realm. We have demons that can come from the submarine realm. 
that can come, they are lodged in those places. Designed for a certain grace, to attack a certain grace. So the demons that come against us is not the same that comes against a believer. Trust me. And what, and so, the, so the only way you can do it is by, nobody calls themselves a prophet and survives if they're not a prophet. Because you see, Satan is not spiritual, although he's spirit. I'm going to say it again. He is not spiritual, although he's spirit. He needs to see something in the physical to understand who you are in the spirit. So if he sees prophet so and so and that one is not a prophet he attacks that one as if they were a prophet and I can get into many scriptures regarding that as well isn't it amazing that God even the angels said to Abram now I see your faith what do you mean now you see my faith what is God's faith is seen by an action that is physical that is why God, people say, but I love the Lord in my heart. No, I want to see your giving. Unless I see your giving, I cannot see your love. Because I had to give my only begotten son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God so loved, so I so love the Lord when I give. It is the, the only way my love is measured. We have over 1,700 people watching right now. The only way my love is measured is by my giving. Tonight is the last night of the month, eh? Let it be the last night of first fruits. Say, God, I'm not going to let that clock strike midnight hour tonight. Or I can go into USA time just for a bit of grace for into tomorrow morning. But for my first fruit that is holy to be. Listen, it is illegal for God not to bless you when you give your first fruit. It is illegal. You will see. I saw so many people giving first fruits. I cannot say by names. I just saw the account. That's all. And uh, I'm telling you, it will be the best year you have ever seen in your life. Do you know how blessed I am as a prophet? And please, that money doesn't come to me personally. It's for the church. Please understand that you may give it personally also. We, we will never stop you for that. But do you know how blessed I feel when I saw the church blessed like this month? And I was like, wow. God, this is more than mega churches get in. Which tells me the people are ripe for a move and a manifestation of God. And I don't care what the heretics say. I don't care what the heretic hunters say. I don't care what the, what the, what the critics say. I don't care whoever says what. How the hell are we going to build? You know, you're not allowed to say how the hell in America. I never knew it. But how the hell are you going to build for 80 to 100 million, man? One campus. And please go work it out. That is the cost. So... I had a great message, which can still really work right now, but I'm going to leave it for Krugersdorp. Um, to show you how God disappears from you, and when He disappears from you, you think that He is still, you think that He has left you, but He's busy confusing your enemies. It's called the pillar of fire. And how He will make your enemies think that they are following God, but He takes them into a trap. I'm going to leave that for next week. Because many times the critics will come and they'll say, no, the Lord is telling me to do this and to do that and to do this. And they think they're following God, but God is gathering all your enemies into one place to destroy them. 
And why is it that we can speak like this? And why is it that those are favor? It is just because you are in, the, in a prophetic church or a church where there's a prophet. God gives favor. That is the order. That is how it has always been. It is just like that. We will have people coming from mega churches coming into this church. And they will manifest the moment they get into this church. So hold on. Wait, wait, wait. But where's the glory in your church? That you are not manifesting there. We've had big leaders coming from other churches, pastors coming from other churches. They to walk by the door and they slither the, further, the, the, the rest of the way in. The glory. The glory will offend the mind to expose the heart. That is why many could not even break down earlier because all these sitting i'm not saying all of you i'm just saying men they would sit and analyze and what, what is this no 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 brother your heart is not broken yet you have not experienced the cross you have not experienced the work of jesus christ in your life yet and the only way you can experience it is by repentance and letting your pride go are you guys with me have your seats, have your seats. There is a, there is a man there, um, so right with you, with a gray hair, with a blue shirt. Yes, yeah. Stand for me. Who's with you? Is that your wife? Come stand here. I'm just going to tell you, I'm not getting into forensic or any of that stuff tonight for the sake of time. I'm just going to tell you what I see as a prophet because when I was walking past you, I saw the hand of the Lord upon your life. And the Lord said to me, where the enemy has come to bring asunder, I will bring restoration for the prosperity that has been stolen from your life. And businesses or things, business ideas or things that has been stolen and taken away by the enemy. For the Lord is saying, son, where the enemy has tried to rip everything financially from you. I have anointed you with the oil of prosperity. But I pray that right now by the word of a prophet tonight, that restoration is going to come because I'm looking at a business the whole time when I'm laying my eyes on you and I'm seeing things that is going to it's like to do with with I saw something in relation whether it's going to come or whether it is there but I saw something like in the area of steel and I saw something in the area of bricks but the Lord is saying to me these are things that is going to come but I saw things right now in and in the month of June Even in the month of June and the month of July, the Lord is saying, see how I'm going to shift and change things. For the enemy try to take your life and take your life. The Lord is saying, the business I have put into these hands so that I've ordained these hands to have, it is only but a starting point. And it is going to go further, but ideas will be given to you, says the Lord. Now, I saw like numbers or something like that. Some numbers or something like an accounting or something like swirling or something like that. But the Lord is saying, I will cause an increase to come to you. There has been praying about a certain move that God is going to answer. For I will cause my breath and the family and the seed that there has been 
for past relationships I'm going to bring healing from which the enemy wanted to use past relationships I'm going to bring healing from and the and the seed seed will worship the Lord for the Lord is saying where the enemy is trying to take the seed my word and I'm watching over my word over their lives over the lives of seeds I see one egg one seed that will be used by God I'm looking at a microphone that will be held in the hand I'm seeing like preaching or worshiping for the Lord is saying I'm about to bring a new season and a new breath because the wilderness has been long and the wilderness has been tough it was almost like a starting over where the Lord is saying you will have a second breath that is going to come in but the is people that is trying to remove things from you and trying to steal things from you I cancel it this night in the name of Jesus Christ by the word of a prophet I silence the thing the mouths and the pointing of the finger in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray this thing that I see regarding a business, let it be sparked and ignited in the name of Jesus Christ. <gasps> Touch the Lord. No. The Lord is going to use this man in the area of ministry as well. The Lord is going to use him in the area of ministry as well. For the Lord is saying, I'll give you revelation, I'll give you wisdom, a lot of wisdom in your mouth. But see the ability that I'll cause you to put certain things together, which the enemy tried to steal from a very young age of a childhood age. Hmm? Do you want to prophesy? Oh. He is in the building trade. He works with metals and stuff, okay? That's the first thing. Yes, they're part of us. Second of all, <laughs> come on! Second of all, the one seed, one seed, the son, is being trained in ministry with us, like you said. I've been giving him a mic and telling him to preach, okay? The accusation that we've been praying about, that's been pointed at them as a family, that accusation has happened. That really happened. Okay, I'm freaking out. <laughs> and then on top of it, they were in another business arrangement. And that thing that you said that where that thing was cut to pieces, that actually happened. Um, it's just like word for word for word. Am I right? Give Jesus a praise offering. Come on, where the voice of God is. Sit with you where the voice of God is. God is there. There's one more thing. His whole bloodline is it was AFM pastors, and he's been running away from the ministry. And you prophesied that right now over him. You said you said something. You 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 confirmed something that I prophesied last night to to Pastor Chris. What did you say? You said that uh, the advocate that is, yeah, it's Sunday night. There's uh, the advocate is one of my advisors and leaders in the church. Yes. You called him out, but you said there's something about the number 43. Yeah. He was confused, but I was standing there. I just turned 43. Come on. So I'm not sure what that. And you, while I was here, you said that there's a lady in our church. Sorry? There's a lady in our church that's being attacked. 
Yes. That was my blood sister, the one who led me to the Lord. She, she was, was sitting there wow. in the service and wow. she's going through a number of things. Wow. wow. So it wow. was spot on. Even what you said about my mother. Yes. I sent her the video, everything that you said. It is confirmed. You need to pray for you need to pray and to pray for your mother's house. Yes. Yes. You need to pray for your mother's house. Yes. Yeah, hey? you need to pray for your mother's health. Get ask her what I say, and then she will tell you. Okay, for the teachers. Sharpest prophets. So you can just stand there with a black shirt. Just take the mic. I just want to hear his name quickly. What's your name, sir? Jock. Sorry? Jock. Jock. Mm. Don't worry, it'll be fine. <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a brother? No. Passed you... away. Passed away? Mm. How long ago? Two years. Why, why I'm asking that is because there's a great call on your life. It's a great call on your family's life, great call of God on your life. But let me tell you what I wanted to say about your brother if he was alive. It was like I saw, it was like I saw, no, let me, let me, let me, let me change it rather. In the family, there's something that the enemy wanted to bring into the family. Almost like if somebody, uh, if somebody, uh, if something is self-inflicted, for example, whether it is drinking or something like that, but there's a self-inflicted thing that the enemy wants to bring into the family to stop the family from progressing into the things that God has for them. For the Lord is saying, I'm going to heal a certain rela a relationship when it comes to your father, when it comes to authority. And the Lord is saying, I will make you know that as a heavenly father, I have love for you that supersedes the pain or the love of an earthly father and things that has happened. And the love that he has for you is going to cause greatness to come out of you. Because the Lord is saying a lot of walls have gone up because people wanted to betray and people wanted to, wanted to say things. Is that your wife right next to you? Is that your wife? How long have you guys been married? For long? 14 okay. years. 15 years. The whole family has a call of God on their lives. And you are not here by accident. You are not here by accident. Is that your daughter? Is that your daughter? One standing there? Yep. Come stand here for me. Stand there. What's your name? Kylie. You have not seen what God is going to do for you yet. For even as you leave this place tonight, you will have an encounter with Him. For I saw the Lord visiting you in the night watches and I saw your voice going like spreading to many things for the Lord is saying even as you finish school as you finish these things you're going to see an explosion that is going to happen because you're going to be blessed financially and it, even like things where the enemy try to come against the family with things but in you is a creativity that is locked up that the Lord is going to begin to pull out. For the Lord is saying, do not silence your voice. Do not think of yourself less than what you should have because the hand of the Lord is upon your life. There's an angel that is standing behind you for even tonight and even as you go to bed, you're going to feel like goosebumps all over you. Even as you go to bed, you're going to feel a sensitivity. For the Lord is saying, I will speak to you, my daughter. 
that I will raise you up for there's an encounter that is awaiting you. For I will fill you and baptize you with fire. For prayers has come from a grandmother or from generations before that has touched this family and whom the word of the Lord is being watched over on this family. For when I look at your mother in the spirit, the Lord is saying, I'm going to use your mother in a great way. When I look at this whole family, the Lord is saying what the enemy has tried to bring an attack. I'm going to turn everything around with you. The Lord is saying, watch and see the greatness that is going to come out of you and the treasure that is locked up inside of you. For do not worry about voices and whisperings. For I saw prayers surrounding you. For even where there's, there will be certain relationships that will try to pull you to the left and pull you to the right. The Lord is saying, see, I will keep you focused upon me. But you will yet have an encounter with me that will shake you to the core. And it will put a fear in you where you will realize, but wait, I have never known that God existed like this. For the Lord is saying, I'll guide, your, I'll guide your footsteps. I'm going to take you into an academia place. A place of academia, like, a, like an ability to really excel in certain things because the enemy tried to attack in that area. And the Lord is saying, I'm going to place my anointing upon you, but your life will not be the same. Many will try to point the finger. Many will distance themselves. It is because there's a prophetic anointing that is inside of you. And I impart the prophetic gifts. Lift it up one more time. Give me your hand. The prophetic anointing, the prophetic gift that I'm seeing. Make her hungry for it. Take it now in Jesus' name. And I pray for the mother. Mother, come here. Pray for the whole family. Can the family come? You just stand here. What is your name? So God is going to work so hard in your heart. God is going to work so, such a big work in your heart. The greatness that is going to come forth out of you. For the words of an evangelist and the words to witness is locked up in your mouth. And many has prayed for it. For the Lord is saying, you have guarded and you have protected those around you. In the meantime also you guarded and protected yourself. But I'm going to become your protector and I'm going to become your guarder. guarder. For the Lord is saying, I will be a father to you. Like you've never seen the spirit of rejection that is trying to follow from a young age, that is trying to be a voice to get approval and to cry, try to try to get uh, acceptance. For the Lord is saying, see how I will begin to remove these things this night. But I'll cause a love to come out of you that's going to change and transform people. For you will encounter the love of the Father tonight. For there is gold that has to come out of you in a powerful way. I see businesses that has to come forth out of your hands. I see your ability to work with your hands and create things that is going to cause wealth to come to this family. For the Lord is saying the time of struggle and the time of hardship is coming to an end. For there's a new season that is coming to you and there will be waters in the wilderness and there will be rivers in the wilderness. I'm looking at a property that is going to be, that is going to be handed over. I'm looking at a property, something like an inheritance or something that is going to come. Even if it's a spiritual inheritance, it is, it is going to happen and you're going to see it manifest. Because I looked and I saw a dream for the Lord is saying the prayers that you've had and what you want to do for your family is coming to pass. Not only one property, there'll be two or three. And I saw the Lord say, saying to me, my, these heart's desires I'm going to begin to bring to pass. But see, there's a geographical move that the Lord is going to be bringing to highlight to me about things that is going to take place when it comes as a, ge a geographical move things that is going to shift for I will yet speak to you in that day and you will know the peace of the Lord for right now I remove every wall every barrier every pain from childhood every time when you had to be hot any time when you had to protect for the Lord is saying encounter my love this night in Jesus name <sighs> touch his life
You have prayed so long. You have prayed so long. And the Lord is saying, it's time to look at yourself with different eyes. For I remove the labels that the enemy has tried to put upon your life. The labels we have tried to see yourself through and the lenses that you've tried to see yourself through. For the enemy has tried to label and put a, a label upon you, a name that is not of me, says the Lord. Where is whisperings in the spirit that's trying to affect your identity. But the Lord is saying, you have prayed and you have prayed. And I saw you seeking his face. I saw you asking questions. I saw you praying and praying. And knowing there's a promise that you have from the Lord. For the Lord is saying, lift up your eyes and begin to see that I shall remove, even now I come against every work of witchcraft spoken against your life, every form of witchcraft coming from generations before, every form of witchcraft that is affecting your body and every illness that the enemy wants to bring upon your body. I command healing. I remove this heaviness. I remove the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ for I see how the Lord is going to use you mightily. For I saw how things of joy is going to return back. I saw how joy of a childhood is going to come back. And the Lord is saying, there's going to be a realm of rest for this family that they're going to enter into. I rebuke the pointing of the finger. I rebuke the words of witchcraft. I rebuke every word curse that has been spoken over you. And words of friends, for the Lord is saying, be very, very careful when it comes to certain voices. For they like, it means like they mean well, but there's an intention that is not well, says the Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give him a praise off. I want us to get into, I want us to get into, uh, get us, get into prayer. How many of you want the fire of God? to fall upon your life. And while we're going to be praying, we will um, be prophesying as well as the Holy Spirit leads. We have people from all over, from every nation, from every... Stretch out your hands, just stretch out your hands. Uh, Prophet Andre. Just uh, sit in front of me. <laughs> yeah? um, I just want to give something short to you. I'm not in the moment of like screaming and stuff. I just want to give something short. That the Lord told me that the season of obfuscation which is a season of obscurity that was done on purpose for the intent of the prophet's eye to be more sharper. So every prophet has to go into a season of obfuscation and God forces them into a season of obfuscation so that they can be pulled into a wilderness. Uh, and it, 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 some might see it with the natural eyes like it's just chaos. But God is, says it's a season of obfuscation so the prophet can come out of that with a sharper eye, with a clearer and more. And those who don't go into those seasons have the glory lifted. Those who don't go into those seasons have the anointing lifted. And the Lord showed me a, a few weeks ago how you have gone into this season of obfuscation where many thought that things have gone wrong, but the Lord is saying, no, 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 no. I have been sharpening and shaping my prophet for a, a season and a word and a message and a movement because 
you have gone beyond the point of just an anointing upon your life. I'm going to begin to create a system, says the Lord, where, where, where a system where, where, where your voice will be reverberated in the realm of the Spirit in a greater way. But the Lord is saying, as my son comes out of the wilderness, as Moses comes out of the wilderness, as John the Baptist comes out of the wilderness, so you're coming out of a season of obfuscation, out of the wilderness, but you're, and a season of manifestation is at hand. Because you have hide and you've hide and you and you, and you pulled back and you pulled back and many thinking something, but the Lord is saying now the season of obfuscation is going to end because you have come now to the realization with the covenant relationship that you are in with with the one that is right next to you. You have come into realization and all of a sudden you have realized and see why things have worked out a certain way. And all of a sudden you have come and you realize, but this has been ordained before the, and it is confused. But because why is something works out one way? And yet it's ordained and elected before the foundations of this world. It's because God is saying, I'm a mystery. And nobody will ever understand my mystery. So nobody will understand my seasons. But I'll take the two of you because, you see, it's very difficult to bless one, says the Lord. Because as Adam and Eve, the Lord blessed them. And God blessed them and not one. For in Him was she and she was in Him. And they were called, and He and she was called Adam. For the Lord is saying that many don't understand the principle and the concept that I need an Eve to be in, a female to be in, a man, and they, as they'll be called Adam, where I will bless them for multiplication and fruitfulness. For the Lord is saying, because there's a message I have given you, prophet, and there's a message that I've given you. For in the corridors of power and the corridors of heaven, there is the words are saying, prophets, as a seer I have raised you up, but I have sharpened your eye now. In the season of obfuscation, the season of obscurity, the season where a, a chicken is in an egg and it's being sharpened, it's being shaped, the season of an eagle that have lost its feathers and loses its beak. And the Lord is saying, because I've caused you to do it on purpose and you are obedient to my voice, you will see now the manifestation of obedience, says the Spirit of God. For the Lord is saying, I shall cause you to bring deliverance to many. For night and now I pray that there will be a season of shifting financially over their lives in the name of Jesus Christ for for the one that is standing next to you the Lord is saying to me that I saw with this was two weeks ago when I wanted to call you to to give this word the Lord said to me visitations visitations for the Lord is saying you shall see my face and you will begin to minister and you'll begin to speak and you'll begin to sing and you'll begin to speak because you've also pulled back but the curse and the words that many has tried to put on you, even from the family, even from things that has come from generations past, even from the fetus, I cancel those things this day in the name of Jesus Christ. From the fetus, the words that has tried to ordain, that has tried to steer a direction. But the Lord is saying, I've had a plan for you and I've had a plan of success for you. For the Lord is saying, see that this night I will remove one more thing. I'm going to remove one more thing and a crown of purpose and a crown of glory will rest upon you and they will see you as whom you have always ordained to be a prophet long before the foundations of this earth for the Lord is saying do not underestimate the relationship do not underestimate right now I cancel every word that is against this I cancel every word that is against this marriage for the Lord is saying it shall be now like an arrow that will be shot an arrow that will be shot in a direction for my arrow of deliverance Deliverance, says the Lord, will be shot into a direction into this nation. Because you have gone into obfuscation and now you will come out sharper. And now you will come out where you will affect politics and you will affect politicians. And they will stand by you for a word. And they will come to your service for a word. For see where I have planted you. I have called it the grounds of the prophet. The high place, the Shiloh of the prophet. And they shall travel from afar and they shall come from the corners of this nation to come to you for a word. I looked at politicians that will come for the word and they shall say the fear of prophet Andre is in that midst. As the Bible says, the fear of Abraham and the fear of Isaac they will say the fear of prophet Andre is in that midst and the Lord is saying my word is in your mouth 
for as you go forth and prophesy, the second breath of your ministry and the second final breath, which is the place that you have ultimately always worked for and what you have died to and given up. Because many times you were given opportunity and you said, no, I'm going to die to this and I'm going to give it up. And the Lord is saying, now there'll be a manifestation, multiplication, a resurrection of a thousand fold that is going to be given to you for everything that your eye has seen is now going to come into fruition. For the Lord is saying, I'll give you wisdom and I'll bring men around you with wisdom, but I'll also cause you to cut certain men out. And the Lord is saying, will cause you to cut certain men out around you but it will all be done by my spirit for do not fear for the road that I'll take you on but I break the power of the enemy against provision and I release provision upon their lives I release the financial blessings upon their lives and for the Lord is saying there'll be a, f- a coin in the fish's mouth for you for this today for the second breath And the second part, the final part of your ministry, your voice will reverberate in the corridors of power in this nation. And for I've shown you even 10 years ahead, and I've shown you the things that will come. And you'll begin to not only speak them, but you will write them down. So you will write the prophecies down as if it is like in a book. For the Lord is saying, as you write them down, it will be published and things will begin to happen. For I will begin to put this idea in your heart, says the Spirit of the Lord. Not only writing a book like others do, but actually writing the judgments and writing the prophecies that is coming from my voice for this nation. For one more time, I'm giving this nation a chance. For one more time, I'm giving this nation an opportunity. For one more time, if this nation rejects the voice of its prophets, this nation will go into a cop, into, obs, uh, into into complete obscurity and complete poverty. For the Lord is saying it is time to rise because the harvest is great, but it is time to rise because there's deliverance that is needed in this nation. For the Lord is saying, as your voice rise, deliverance will go forth and you'll be shot like an arrow of deliverance for many, says the Spirit. You will be a mystery. You will be a wind. You will be like the wind. They don't know whether you come from or where you go. For you will be a mystery in my hand. For you will be an oracle in my hand. You will be like Elijah who just appeared and who's just going away, says the Spirit of God. Come on, let's give him a praise of the first prophet that actually had the right to prophesy to me. My, my wife, can I share? My wife was born Islam. She was born Muslim. And at the age of eight, Jesus appeared to her and said to her, what was the words, love? Fear not, for I am with you. I am Jesus. So he revealed himself to her and said, Fear not, for I am with you, and my name is Jesus. And so she's received, so like you prophesied, the persecution has been humongous. About the last two, three weeks, like you prophesied, am I right? Uh, after how many years? 30? 34? After 38 years, Jesus reappeared to her. <laughs> like you prophesied and said these words, love. What did he say this time? Um, he pointed and he showed me. He says, this is a new day and this is a new thing. And, and so there are, there are many things that the, the, the prophet has said uh, um, that, that, am I right, love, that no one knows? That, hey? We've been facing. Hey? We've been facing. Uh, the, uh, no one knows. I lost so many people because they turned on us because we got married. 
we had so many death threats, hate threats because of this. And you never knew because I kept myself away from you. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> and the rest, I'll tell you in person what it was. Can we just thank the Lord? Amen. Thank you. Come on, give him a praise. Rejoice. Just before we pray, let me just see. That man, as I said, with a blue and white striped shirt, the Lord is going to turn a lot of things around for you. A lot of things around for you. A lot of things where family, like children, try to not honor the way they should. The Lord is going to change situations around and bring restoration to what the enemy wanted to destroy. And we lay hands, we give a lot of words as well. Okay, so I want us to get ready for, uh, I want us to get ready, let's, let's, are we going to do a ring of, let's do a ring of fire. Um, <laughs> Prophet Andre, will you be able to lay hands with me, will you, will you flow with me? And, uh, and uh, let's pack up the chairs, let's get into a ring of fire. We're going to lay hands quickly on you to receive the fire. Keep your eyes on the fire of God. Say with you the pillar of fire. Let's go, let's go.
the thing that the Lord is giving you for. The Lord is saying, let go of hurt of pastors from the past. If I'm saying it right, ministers. For He's making all things new. But this thing that the enemy has tried to bring in with ministers is going to be removed where ministers just try to take advantage or try to do things. And where the enemy has tried to steal out of your heart from a young boy that has always been planted in your heart, the Lord will bring into manifestation a new season and cut through all the layers that the enemy has tried to put on to go in certain directions. But where there's been a misrepresentation of my word, word, word of my works, of my body of Christ to you. The Lord saying, I was not involved. And that was not me. But because you have kept your word for so many years, and you have kept your word towards me, although others might have seen different, you have kept your words towards me. My covenant is established with you. But this, I'm going to begin to do a deep work and remove the pain of certain ministers. The words, as I'm looking at you from family also, uh, family, family, that are saying things and saying things and saying things even about this. Because as I was standing and prophesying uh, over Prophet Andre, the same thing as they were talking, I was walking and, and the Lord is saying to me, the family that is saying things, I'll bring honor to you and I'll cause you to endure through it 
even any form of works of witchcraft that wants to come and wants to stifle things and bring confusion and brings sometimes uh, a discouragement. The Lord is saying, I will fulfill my promise upon your life. What the enemy has meant for harm and where the enemy wants to divide and bring asunder, I shall not allow it to happen as you keep your eyes upon me, says the Lord. The Lord is saying, I'm gonna bring a great transformation for your heart's cry has been to serve me with a passion. But you said, Lord, if we can just find a representation or to see who is true. And the Lord is saying, I will visit you in the night watches. I'll visit you in dreams and I've given you dreams and I've given you visions. And as I said last time, there's something with somebody that is going to be dealt with in your family. And not in your family, in, in, in that is coming in some against business or something like that. A man or somebody that is coming with a bad intention is going to be dealt with. Let's worship, let's worship. We're gonna lay hands right now. Say with you first, raise your hands, raise your hands. Just say, Holy Ghost, feel me with your fire baptize me infuse me with the fire of the holy ghost let the pillar of fire manifest in this place let yahweh manifest in this place let your tangible glory manifest in this place in jesus mighty name Myself, Pastor Martin, Prophet Andre, and Pastor Stefan is going to come and pray for you. I want you to receive the fire of God. Prophesy, pray for healing, do whatever you guys feel led for. Let's take the oil here. Let's worship.
Let your fire fall Let your fire fall Pill fire come Let your fire fall Let your fire fall
one more. God, come and move in power. God, let your glory fall as our praise gets louder. Hey, we call up the God who answers by fire. We run to the altar, surrender our lives, protect and provide. Sunday Kruger's Dorp. Amen. Like to give into this ministry. We have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to encounterchurch.co.za or leondupria.com and click on the give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. 
PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.